have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Can't be caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Can't be caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. God bless you. I am Apostle Irvin Whitlow, and I want to invite you to listen to Making Marriage Meaningful. Join me as we talk about marital matters. It's real. It's raw. It's relevant. Every Saturday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central, on Elation Radio.
Welcome to Making Marriage Meaningful. This is your host, Apostle Irvin Whitlow. Well, hello, hello, and hello. Welcome to Making Marriage Meaningful. It's been so long since I've been with you, but I'm happy to be here on this evening. And we thank God for each and every one of you who is joining us. Come on and tell a friend that Making Marriage Meaningful is on the air. That's right. Tell your friend, tell your neighbor, tell your ma, tell your pa, tell everybody over in Arkansas. Let them know that Making Marriage Meaningful is on the air. And before we go any further, I am your host, Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow, Jr., and I want to make this disclaimer. I do not claim to be a relationship expert. I just share things based upon experiences that I've been through, relationships, marriage, whatever, over the years. And I believe that there are things that God has given me that will help those who are in their marriage considering getting married or perhaps going through a divorce and might even be considering a remarriage. I want to talk to you, and I want to put this other disclaimer out there that this conversation you're about to hear is exceptionally real. There is nothing here that is fabricated, nothing here that is fictional. This is all real life. Not only is it real, it's raw. We talk about some raw stuff, okay, and, uh, and, 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 and I do mean raw. Okay, so don't expect us to be saved, sanctified, and cute. No, we say sanctified and we raw. We speak the real, unadulterated word. Now, I need you to understand that this is also relevant. No matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're going through, I guarantee that this conversation will help you. Now, let me make this clear. I don't do this on my own. There is a panel of great men and women of God, some married, some divorced, some been widowed, whatever the case is, but they are here to join in and have this conversation with me on tonight. So I'm going to do a roll call and see who's joining us and go from there. Let me start with the one who is a, the reason that I'm able to do this podcast because she's the producer of this show. I want to uh, introduce to some and present to others the one, the only, the lovely Dr. Kimmy Robinson. Dr. Kimmy, how how you doing tonight? Kimmy Kim is in the booth, is in the building, and I'm ready for this wonderful discussion on tonight. Thank you for having me. Awesome. I'm so glad to hear your voice. It was just about 48 hours ago when I heard it the last time. <laughs> Woo! Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's see. <laughs> Let me see who else is here tonight. I believe that Reverend Billy Gabriel is going to join us tonight. Are you here tonight, sir? Y- yes, I am. I am here. And welcome Amen. back. Amen. Amen. So glad to hear your voice. God bless you tonight. God bless you. I don't know if they're here tonight, but I'm going to try and see. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Brother uh, Otis and uh, Brother Otis and Lady Gabriel. Uh, are you all here tonight? Okay, so they're not joining us tonight. Well, we're praying for them wherever they are. Let me see if my big brother is around here somewhere. I'm talking about the one, the only, the Bishop-elect Ernest E. Richard Jr. Are you joining us tonight, sir? Is he muted? All right. Well, let's see. I, I believe I believe that uh, Apostle Felicia Flythe is on the air tonight. Come on and say hello to us, woman of God. Hello to us, woman of God. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're so funny. You're so funny. Hey, I, how y'all doing? Well, all right. It's good to hear you. Good to hear you. I invited a special guest, a friend of mine, all the way from Akron, Ohio, to join in tonight. I'm not certain if she's here, but I'm going to check. Uh, Apostle Catrice Bolden, are you here this evening? All right. So I'm believing that she just didn't make it at this point. Amen. Well, thanks be to God for those of you who are here. There may be someone else who's on the air who I may not be familiar with. Would you please say hello to us and then identify yourself? Go on yes, once. sir, Brother Brandon. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What you say, Brother Brandon? God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Amen. Amen. Who else is me. here tonight? Amen. Who else is joining us? 
Brother Chuck. Brother Chuck, yes, sir. God bless you, Brother Brandon, Brother Chuck. So glad to have the both of you on as well. Amen. Anyone else tonight? Anyone else? All right. Well, we are so glad to have each and every one of you. We appreciate you all. I I want uh, Apostle Flythe to find me the scripture in the Amplified Bible, uh, Matthew 19, verses 1 through 6. Would you be so kind as to do that for me, uh, please? That is Matthew 19, 1 through 6. And I'm going to ask Reverend Billy Gabriel if he would open us up in prayer tonight in Jesus' name. Okay. You doing a, you doing, going to scripture first? No, I want you to pray first, sir. Thank you. To God be the glory. Most precious and everlasting Father, as we come before you tonight with our open heart and open mind and the discussion of making marriages work and those things are in accordance with God. And we come, Father, i just like to thank you for your love, your mercy, your forgiveness, your providence, and your protection. For that, God, I give you all glory and praise. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that we come with open hearts and open minds that we receive and we will discuss these subjects tonight harmoniously and peacefully with the hope of helping one of us, another. By that, dear God, I ask of you for our discernment. And we get, as, as a result of that, I give you all the praise and glory that you so rightly deserve. This is my earnest prayer in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. All right, come on and read for me, Apostle Flynn. Okay, Matthew 19. Verses 1 through 6 in the Amplified Version reads as so, concerning divorce. Now, when Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee and went into the part of Judea, that is beyond the Jordan. And large crowds followed him, and he healed them there. And the Pharisees came to Jesus, testing him and asking, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any, excuse me, let me repeat that. And the Pharisees came to Jesus, testing him and asking, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? He replied, have you never read that he created them from the beginning, made them male and female? Verse 5, and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined inseparable to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. Verse 6. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. I have read to you Matthew 19 verses 1 through 6, the Amplified Version. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, doers, and believers of his word. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And from those verses, I want to focus on the thought conflict resolution. Conflict resolution. Uh, It's easy, if you will, it's easy to make it appear that marriage is an easy relationship. If marriage was such an easy relationship, there would be absolutely no divorces. But apparently, because there are divorces, it's because marriages are not easy. The thing that we have yet to understand in marriage is that the goal ultimately is to become one. You cannot accomplish anything without becoming one. Nothing happens with two. It happens when they become one. That's the thing. And so what stands in the way of becoming one, if you will, is personality differences. Uh, What stands in the way of becoming one is different ideologies. 
What comes, what stands in the way of becoming one is different upbringings, different customs, different cultures, different experiences, different educational levels, if you will. Uh, These are the things that become an issue. And so here's what the Pharisees do. They come to Jesus and they tested him. They try on him like, hey, you know, Jesus, we know that they know that Jesus is a teacher. They know that he knows what he's talking about. So they come to Jesus saying what he going to say. They're like, hey, man, yo, is it is it okay for a man to put away his wife for every cause? What, now, 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 they knew the law. That's the thing. They knew the law. And watch this. People know the law. People know the agreement. People know the arrangement. But the problem is that people do not apply that to when they get married. So now they get married, and everything that goes wrong, all of a sudden, people want a divorce. I'll never forget the very first time I got married. Man, I was into this woman like I don't know what. She was all that in a bag of chips to me. I mean, Goodness gracious, her hair smelled good, her body smelled good, and I'm going to leave the rest alone. And she was all that. Now, here's the thing that got me. Here's the thing that got me, right? We had been talking to each other and, uh, you know, dating or receiving or courting, however you want to call it, for about a good three months and came around to Valentine's Day, and I was traveling to go do a revival. Uh huh. And I remember, I remember, I remember that I she wanted to go with me. And I was like, okay, we were getting ready to go, and... Uh, and 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 take care of whatever. Go to do the revival. And before we left the city of Boston to go to New York to do the revival, I think it was no, it was in Connecticut to do the revival. She said, she said, you know, I would love to come back as Mrs. Whitlow. Now, what's amazing is two things. One, I would because I'm a poet. I wrote a big po- piece of poetry that every letter spelled out the words, will you marry me? It's been a long time. Don't ask me to remember it. I I don't, and I'm not going to try to. Nevertheless, I did this big old letter, and I remember that I had just gotten paid, and I went, and I bought the rings. I sure did, right? So that's what she wanted. So I figured, hey, I'm going to man up and give her what what she wants. Now, this was a time, if you will, that I was extremely naive. I, I knew about, the only thing I knew about marriage at that time was having a a, 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 how do I say this, having a legal sex partner. Let me put it that way. That's what I knew about marriage because, you know, we, when in my day you couldn't live with a woman and, and because it was called shacking up, not in ministry. So anyway, so, you know, I did this thing, got this, got this thing together. So, of course, she said, yes, I go to do this revival. During the process of going to doing the revival, a couple of things happened. One, had to get a blood test. Two, in the midst of getting a blood test, um, I, got, I had gotten sick. I had gotten the, a cold real bad, this bad fever and all of this and that. I had preached three nights here, then had to go preach in New York Sunday morning, and I was so heated because of the, the temperature in my body. I had such a temperature that my body was literally heating up the house. Literally, that's how hot I was with this fever. But yet, I'm still trying to get married. But the problem was that the uh, place to get the uh, blood work um, information was not ready, so I couldn't get the marriage certificate. Okay, fine. So uh, we figured, okay, she got to go home. She got to get back to work next morning. Somehow, we're on our way back home. We get home back to Boston, and she realizes that she left all of her information and her pocketbook right back in Connecticut at the place where we were. So we had to turn around again the next morning to go back so she could get the stuff. It just so happened that the the, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the the blood work was ready. We could go get the marriage license. I called the uh, my spiritual father, the bishop, and he came that evening and he married us. We had some cake. We had some ice cream. We had a little sparkling apple cider. Went on back home. We on our way. And, boy, it was all good the first couple of weeks. We were legal. I get to bang, 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 bang. It was legal. Yes, I'm happy about it. Thank you, Jesus. I had the biggest smile on my face. All right. Now, two weeks had gone by. And after just two weeks had gone by, we didn't have a communication system in place. We didn't have a relationship system in place. All we knew is we were married. And so because we were married and we were, you know, not adjusted to each other and everything, the first thing she said to me after two weeks is, I want a divorce. Like, huh? 
wait a minute, where did I go wrong? What did I miss? Mm. What part did I mess up? And what not? And so, so, and so I'm trying to figure this out, okay? And so I'm like, I'm calling my spiritual father. I'm like, she, she just told me she wanted a divorce. We we just been married two weeks. I don't understand what's going on. And and so he he had said he said you know you got to understand that women they do stuff like that. Now they say everybody, so please don't trip now, women, when you hear this. He said, but that's women for you. You got you got to learn her. The Bible says you got to dwell with her according to wisdom. So you got to learn her. So I didn't know that I needed to learn her and what bothers her and what ticks her off and this and that because I thought she was okay because every time she came in, she wanted to ride. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. Well, anyway, so I'm going on. And so anyway, she talked about she wanted this divorce. I'm like, wait a minute. This don't make no sense. So anyway, she got through that. And every time something went wrong, she wanted a divorce. And that was her thought process. And I'm sitting here saying, wait a minute. Something is not right because you can't tell me every time something goes wrong, you want a divorce. And that becomes the issue because you don't have no system of how to work relationship because you're so different. So what I'm saying is if we're going to deal with conflicts, we have to have some kind of system in place to make the marriage work. Is there anybody who's in agreement, disagreement? Anybody has any other views or any other thoughts? Let me hear from you. What if it doesn't work? What if you try for years and it doesn't work or will it eventually work? Well, again, it's about what kind of system you put in place. Oh, See, okay. because, because, because it can, I, I want to be real with you, my friend, that it is easy to cop out. It is easy to give up. It is easy to say, this is not going to work, so I'm going to leave this alone. It's easy to do that. But when you really, really want your marriage, right, then you don't find uh, the easy route. You find a route that works. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody talk to me here. Anybody else? Don't get quiet already. We're just getting warmed up. That's all I got for now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dr. Uh, Kimmy. Come on, Apostle Flight. Y'all talk to me now. Don't get your head, sit here quiet. Come on, talk to me. Well, if they won't talk to you, I'll talk to you. I do apologize, but I do. I had to take care of some business. Here's the bottom line. When you've got schizophrenic females or males in any relationship, you find yourself in a position where you yourself have to make some decisions. Either you're going to put up with this nonsense or you're going to... Excuse my French. Ladies, I mean you no disrespect, but this is how some men would think. Either you put the heifer to rest or you figure out how to get her out of her own head. Because I'm sorry, I'm going to say there are a lot of insecure women out there who feel like in their mind you're doing something to sabotage the relationship. And because they believe that you're doing something to sabotage the relationship, they start counteracting on something that's not even there. Figure that one out. Hmm. Mm. Well, put me in, coach. Put me in. Put me in. Come coach. on, Apostle Uh oh. You know, <laughs> every time my brother opened up his mouth, you know, I always got to come back. And I'm gonna speak for every woman. Um, no, I'm not. I'm gonna speak for me. Listen, <laughs> women, we do, we do tend to sabotage things. We do, we do. I'm, I'm not giving an excuse. I'm being real. And 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 I hope you guys are. Are, um, are hearing me and hearing me with your heart, okay? Now, if a woman um, has been dogged out by a man, and, and, and communication is a number one factor for women. I heard the young man say, what if it just don't work? See, you got to make it work. If you, if, you, if you want it to work, you got to make it work, okay? You got to make it work. A, a, a fighter never quits. A quitter never wins. So if anything worth having is worth fighting for, especially, mm. well, it ain't that part yet, but I, you, you can't be so quick to throw in the towel every time he don't put the toilet seat down. You can't be so quick mm. to throw in the towel every time. You, you know, we done had this. Every time, you know, I might leave my phone hanging up on the, 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 the um, the, the shower uh do hick in the Because you know, I, you, you can't do that. You you just you you can't be so easy to throw it throw away what you said you asked God for. 
Because if you say you ask God for well, you know what? And I, I hear you. I hear you, but now you can't also want to throw in the towel because she goes from a Coke bottle to a milk bottle over a period of time. You can't want to throw well, listen, in the towel be, because she burnt the toast. I'm, just, I, I'm trying. I, I ain't dog. I'm just putting it out there like it is because there are some guys, and I know a couple personally, that were talking about divorcing their wife because she gained a few extra pounds over a couple of years' time. And the truth of the matter, I used to tell these guys, well, you can leave her, find you somebody that used to look like her a few years ago, and then when that person gets fat and out of shape, what are you going to do? Go find another one? He said, these women are Probably. not cars. No, these women are not cars. You don't trade them in every so many years. You have to learn. If you're not loving them from the inside out, you ain't loving them at all. Let's just say that, Okay. I'm sorry, right. fellas. Let's can say the same put thing me in. Wait, 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 wait. Put me in, coach. Put me in. I want to throw one from the three-point line. From the three-point line. Look, I, I mean, you know, you, 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 you've, heard the, you've heard the saying, the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. Now, for those of you guys, and if there are any women out here that are opposed to me being extremely raw, because here comes raw like you've never heard Bishop-elect spoke, speak before. You can eat at the Y because you, because you can go down there and have lunch. But when she starts, when it gets to the point where her thighs are about to smother you and you can no longer go down there, how come she now all of a sudden becomes useless? Yeah, I said it. Oh. I can't well, say it. You heard every word. You heard every word. I like word. my brother, I'm sorry. Bishop. Let's I like Bishop. Let's Bishop, Bishop, I like the uh, realness. That that reality, because I, I know personally some. I have a lot of male friends, and they divorced their wives because they gained weight, and that's not cool. I divorced because uh-huh. I was um, verbally abused. So I, there's a two different things. And yes, I did not quit, but yes, I threw in the towel because I know, I know for a fact that's not what God has for me. But when it well, comes see. to like something like that. Yeah, I have seen uh-huh. that happen. I have seen that now, happen. Now, I, I, I'll say this, and I say it in jest. Ladies and gentlemen, those who are listening, this is my sister in the Lord, and we do this to each other. If you had waited for me, Kimmy Kim, you'd still be married today. But no! You couldn't wait. No, I'm anyway. <laughs> well, she figured she would trade you in for another model. Oh. With first lady. Hey. Uh-uh, first lady. <laughs> I love my first lady. Well, no, no. Uh, I Listen, love- first lady is first lady is okay with it because she already know we mess with each other. She's heard us and she's been around us. We've had conversations, folks. I've been on the phone, but let me get back to the subject at hand. All of that is being said to get to this particular point. People have to learn what a number one real love and real commitment is because there are folks who have mm-hmm. an inkling of an idea of what real love and or real commitment is, but there's no real commitment. I heard. You say you you were divorced for you because you were verbally abused. I was divorced on three separate occasions. The first time, and it was my fault, and I still uh, uh, take responsibility. My first divorce ended because I slapped her across the bed in a, mo- a heated moment that had nothing to do with any kind of argument. It was just the way I was feeling at that time, but I wasn't saved. So I'm not going to hold that one too much, but that was number one. Number two, and y'all heard me say this a hundred times, so a hundred and one is not going to hurt. I was extremely excited when number two stepped out on me with what was at that time supposed to be my best friend. I wanted to buy the guy a car, okay, because I never should have married the chick to begin with. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, wanted to said, buy wait, car. wait, did you say you wanted to buy him a car? <laughs> I wanted to buy him a car. Because well, he could not I want he, he did what, what he did was he did and I'm sorry, I you know, and I don't want to be disrespectful toward the young lady because that wasn't her fault. I was trying to come up on the rebound and I rebounded the wrong way. It must have you know, it's almost like being on a football team and you get an interception and somebody hits you and spins you around and it ends up being a safety because you ran the wrong way. That's pretty much what happened in that particular issue. Now, all I'm simply saying is, number three, after 14 years, uh, the first seven years, and Apostle Whitlow can witness this, 14, the first seven years were great. And I'm sorry, I've got to say it, this individual grandchildren came from 
what is she's not my biological daughter, but I, to this day I still call her my daughter because she still treats me like her dad. But she had children, and when the first set of grandkids came up, that relationship just flat out dissipated. There was no legitimate reason for that relationship to end. Toward the end, in the last year or so, she became abusive, and it was just time to go because I had two choices. Either I get away from this chick or I'm going to start laying hands suddenly. So my whole point is simply this. There are different strokes for different folks. There are different things that will push you into different directions. But at the end of the day, if you've got a relationship and all it needs is a little TLC, please, ma'am, please, sir, don't throw it in the trash because you might be throwing away an absolute treasure. You don't know what that woman could turn out or that man could turn out to be for you. How many of you remember the movie Acrimony? Oh yeah. Uh, with, mm. uh, oh yeah. Taraj, Taraji P Henson. Uh-huh. There are situations in there, there. There are situations in this lifetime that end up like that. She didn't have any confidence in him. The man was a struggling scientist. There are brothers out there that are putting their best foot forward every day, and the woman's not appreciating it, and she's running around. I saw something just today on Instagram. Kind of made me sick. You who remember the the, the, the TV show uh, Cheaters? Black man yes. is working his behind off. I mean, this brother's working. I mean, working, working. And, you know, suddenly they had been following his girlfriend for the last few months and come to find out that she was fooling around with this guy. And they showed the different times when her and this guy were in different places. They went into restaurants and into stores and into things like that, went into his house, was there for a couple of hours, and then they came out hugging and they got in the car. It was his car that he bought for her so she and the baby could could get around. Now, here he is saying, I'm trying to supply for my daughter, and I'm trying to do this for my daughter, and she's out here fooling around. I ought to just take my daughter and move away. Well, came time to confront the girl after enough time and enough evidence, come to find out that that wasn't even his daughter. But hey, wait, wait, that's not the, that's not the ironic part. And I'm saying this for somebody that's listening to us today. Not only was that not his daughter, homeboy, girl, homegirl had went and bought the boy some sneakers when they got confronted. They had just come out of a footlocker, and he, she bought him some brand-new sneakers. Come to find out that's his daughter. Now, remember, the car belongs to him, the husband who was working, or the boyfriend, excuse me, who was working. They jumped in the boyfriend's car and drove off. If that ain't... Uh, let me shut up. Anyway, moving right along. If, if, see, I couldn't have been him. I mean, first of all, you're cheating on me. Second of all, the baby ain't mine. Third of all, the dude ain't worth it because he ain't working nowhere. Last but by no means least, you're going to put that Negro in my car that I bought you, and you're going to drive off. Oh, I'm about to strip you clean. Yeah, I said it. Well, now, I mean, but these these are real <laughs> issues that a lot of yes. times a lot of individuals don't want to deal with. See, and, and, but, but at the end of the day, stripping at the individual because of cheating, it's a choice. See, here's, here's my thing, and this is where I'm at, because when they ask him this question, here's the reality. Shall a man put away his wife for every cause? So my no. thing is you're going to get rid of a person for everything that they do. I mean, granted, the Bible does make it clear that uh, 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 that if there's infidelity, it gives you ground to uh, uh, to divorce. But yeah. my question, because because we're always talking about the love of God, so my question is, at what point do we make the, the a, a divorce? A an obsolete issue, and we look at uh, making the situation better. I mean, now, Grant. Now, let me make sure I explain this. I am not talking about the man or the woman who habitually steps out. I'm not talking about that. So let me make it. Let me see if I can put it this way. So let's say the woman had the was having an affair. On the man, let's say for six months, but let's yep. say in total with breakups and makeup, they've been together for 18 years. 
Uh-huh. So my question, they and out of the 18 years, they've been married for 12. Okay. So you mean to tell me, so you mean to tell me after 18 years because of, of the the six months of infidelity, we're going to throw all of that away? You mean to tell me so there was there's nothing that is worth saving? There is nothing worth fixing? There is nothing worth making right? I mean, because let's be honest, there's going to be conflict in any marriage. There's no getting around it. Conflict is inevitable. There's going to be trouble. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be complications. There's going to be things that you're going to have to confront. But is is divorce always the first result? Why can that, there not be the mindset that, hey, there is a way we can get past this? If it is going to counseling or if it is trying to do something new, if it is, if you will, plucking up and relocating and getting far away from certain types of individuals, why? Why is it always, let's just get divorced? It, it just makes so much more sense. It, it's just so much easier. It's so much, but yet, uh, the whole 18 years, oh, I love you so much. Oh, you mean so much to me. Oh, we've been through this together. We've been through that together. Because when you, when, cause, cause, cause this is what I've been thinking. And, and I, was, I was talking with a friend of mine the other day. And I said that if you were, I, I don't know if you've ever seen Fireproof. Uh, the movie Fireproof, but in this uh-huh. movie Fireproof, uh, with what's his name that was on uh, Growing Pains or whatever it was, um, uh, he showed there's a scenario of gluing uh, the black and the white salt and pepper shaker together, right? He okay. glues it together, and dude, and dude is wants to pull it apart. Right, and so, and his his coworker says, "Man, don't pull that apart because you're gonna do a lot of damage if you pull it apart." Here's the thing: divorce does a lot of damage when you pull yes. it apart instead of trying yes. to find a way to work whatever is wrong. Can I get somebody to talk yes. to me here? Yes, you're you're a hundred, you're a thousand percent right on that one. It pulls apart. It pulls apart. It puts you in a position where damage is done from the very from the absolute first tear, there's pain. There's lots of pain. And then when you come to the discovery that what you thought was your forever, babe, is your temporary fix, Lord help us. Lord help us. Lord help us. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm going to say. Lord help. Come on, somebody else talk to me. Somebody else talk to me. Come on in here. Okay. Let me I, hear from I, your brother Chuck. Tell me something. Uh, come on. Come on, uh, uh, yeah. oh, Gabriel, you started to say something. Yes, I, I Come on, yes, sir. I, I was about to say from the very beginning, I, I remember the, the story how he was saying, uh, how the apostle indicated how he got married and how he fell in love and, with the, and, and, and the transaction with the certificates and all that stuff. Now, from, from, from where I sit, it sounds like at the time, I think you're violating the the song that O.C. Smith used to sing. That's an old song. Take time to know her. And it worked on both sides of of the scale. Take time to know her, and she should take time to know you as well. And all too often, the, the question should be asked, what are your expectations when you get married? Uh uh, I, I like to believe that, that that should be a discussion before you got married. And um, and that leads to uh, the, the main thing prior to getting married is the premarital counseling. And even for even for even for non Christians, premarital counseling. What are your dislikes? What do you want? Uh, what what are, what are your idealistic uh, expectations and and, just, and examine yourself. Uh, are you uh-huh. rest, you have a good sense of yourself, and, and how, how are your relationship skills? How are your what type of communication skills do you have? And when and we go back to uh, some previous discussion we had weeks ago about the courting and things, and we get to sit down together to eat together, or go out together, and you can determine, you can find out a lot of things that might irritate you. On both sides now, I'm talking about 
the way he eats, the way he wipes, uh, that is his courtesy, manners, and all the other things will come into play. And that, and now that I'm married, we're going to have our bumps. Now, I was reading a book some time ago, and I don't yeah. remember, but it said, why good things happen to bad people. So I, now bad just, people. Why does good why does good things happen to good marriages? And I can tell you that, and I, I all too often you see that I get very personal. And I can tell you, and I, I just have to be repetitive, but all too often it is because of that restless spirit. Now, uh, we are reading, uh, uh, hearing, and seeing on TV, especially those are uh, in the limelight, are uh, getting divorces after 20 years and all that kind of stuff. And there are those mm-hmm. was much shorter than that. Um, there are so many things. I, I think the young lady was speaking of that some time ago. There are some times when, when, we, we, when we don't know each other, and she, uh, I think the bishop was saying a few minutes about every time, uh, let me slow down, Gabe, that were every time she would get upset, she would threaten, make a threat of getting divorced. And I doubt seriously that she did not mean that unless they got married for the wrong reasons. Because I, if I can remember correctly, it said that every time he came into the door, he was ready to ride. But I, I know, and I know that there's more to sex. I mean, to marriage than sex. It takes something we have often said, communication, respect, and that, and that respect come in the area when when the young lady, uh, disrespect rather, when the young lady gained a couple of pounds in the marriage and he started castigating her. That, to me, it goes against the, the, uh, the, the, the area of Ecclesiastes 13 about uh, uh, keeping a record of uh, uh, disrespect and, and finding fault. It's just so many little things that I know from experience that they would go chip, chip, chip and just cut the, the young lady's resolve and patience down. And they, they uh, we, we said this before, they, 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 they not, may not respond right away, but they have a cupboard or a storage bin where they stack all these things that you're doing, all these free or things that you're stacking up on her until such time they get enough. And that was the thing, enough is enough. And they cut the point, I just can't take it anymore. And that's when... Well, uh, Reverend yeah. Billy, I want yes, to throw something in there with what you're talking about, if I may, Apostle Whitlow. How many of you guys remember the song Thin Line between love and hate? Anybody remember that song? There was a portion of that song where my man talked about 5 o'clock, he's in the hospital, bandaged from head to toe. And he made the comment, and this goes on both more so on the woman's side because women tend to have a higher tolerance levels for nonsense than men do. When a man gets fed up, and it's not hard for a man to get fed up because the man basically is almost looking for a way out to begin with in most cases, not all, but in most. But he said the sweetest woman in the world can be the meanest person a woman in the world and what I'm trying to say is when you have pushed that woman past her limits now you have caused her to become deadly toxic and deadly to the entire relationship and I do mean deadly in every sense of the word because women ordinarily are not vengeful they are very loving most of the time loyal a lot of the times Wanting to make sure that they do everything. No time out. Back up. You ain't coming in right now. The bell ain't rung. Wait for wait for the two minute TV timeout this time. Anyway, <laughs> the bottom line is, you know that you can push them to a point where they'll just turn around and, like somebody said earlier, I have had enough. 
Yes. When they say I have had enough, look out because ain't no telling what they're going to do next. I'm just trying okay. to say. Yeah. One of the, okay. Can I say something? One of the Come on, talk to us. We're doing, we're doing right now is the men are telling us what women think and what they want. And I want to hear from the women what they really think and what they really want. Because our interpretation of what they want is basically what has led to many of us being outside when they are inside. A lot of times they won't talk, uh, 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 brother. A lot of times they won't talk. They'll sur- A woman will surface talk. But when you talk about deep-seated, I mean, when they give you that phrase, I'm going to say this. Steve Harvey said this, and I, I, I believe this. I haven't had this experience. Maybe one of you have. Can we talk? If a woman says to you, can we talk, oh, well, sit down because you're about to hear some stuff. I hear what you're saying. I want to hear myself, so let me shut up. Come on, ladies. Amen, amen, okay. because I, I just asked for the right. women, and before the women could speak, I heard a man speaking. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to come through this telephone after you. <laughs> uh, listen, all right, gentlemen, gentlemen, we have a couple of – we have a couple of guests that are joining in with us. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have um, Pastor Alicia Carter. Um, hey, Alicia. She's, she has something she wants to share. And there's also Apostle um, Ap- Apostle um, Catrice Bolden, who is also on. Uh-oh. So we want to give them an opportunity to talk as well. Come on, Alicia. Amen. Hello. Um, Hello. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about me. For me, I'm not high maintenance. The one thing that I look for and that I want from men is to hear me, to understand me, to love me for who I am. And when I have those moments where I'm insecure, you're there to help build me up and make me feel secure. I want to know that the conversation that I have with you is safe. It's a safe environment for me to express what I'm feeling. I want to know if I can trust you. Can my heart safely trust in you? Can I trust that if we get into a hard time that you're not going to jump ship or you're going to break down on me, that we're in this together and that the load is not on me? Okay. Okay. Uh, Let's hear hear from another woman. Come on. Let's hear from another woman. Dr. Kimmy, come on. Uh, Yes. Repeat the question, please. (laughs) <laughs> you know how I am I'm like I'm, I'm making sure that everyone is on So you know I'm working in, you know, the one, I, This is a great discussion You know I love y'all <laughs> See, Right, right. You know I, I love y'all Bishop elect, <laughs> Bishop yeah, elect, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm not going to say it Okay <laughs> Dear heart it, The question was asked Since over the last few minutes Men have been talking about What they think Women understand Men thinking they understand The mindset of women We want to hear from you women What is it that you want As a matter of fact Brother Chuck You can do it even better than I can Because you brought it up So bring her up to speed (laughs) Go ahead I'm not sure (laughs) You know what See I thought Well come on Well in the meantime I got it I got it I got it. Let's basically let's, let's, what we want from you is what what is it that you want? And uh, if you were to get married, someone was to come and ask you to marry them today. What is it that you are looking for? What is it that you would want? The first thing that I would want personally is someone who loves God with all with all of his heart, soul, and mind. Someone who knows how to treat me, and honestly, someone who knows how to take care of his children and love his them. And of course, you want something that's you know you know attractive to you. Everyone has their own uh-huh. level. Of Just go ahead and say it. That's uh, all right. Put it out there. Yeah. You got to be able yes. to work Everybody the magic. Their... Go ahead. You got to be able to work that magic too. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. That's 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 right. I'm I'm okay to help him with that, but those are my core ones. So I want someone who I am attracted to, someone who can really uh, mentally satisfy me, spiritually, 
me, satisfy me, someone who I can really, you know, lean on, someone who knows how to be a gentleman, someone who is, you know, who is kind, who has a beautiful heart, but at the same time firm and a man, you know. You know, um, I told you I wasn't absolutely, available. You do want that. <laughs> Of course you want that to be part of it, a physical attraction, the 360. But sometimes, you know, unfortunately men have issues in that area. So that won't be a breaking point. We can work on that together. So. Let's hear from Apostle Flythe. She's been holding something back. I want to hear what she has to say. Come on, Apostle Flythe. The coach is putting you in. Not, not Two minute TV not came out. <laughs> no, it's a two minute, it's just, the TV timeout's over. Get in there. Get in there. We need you. Our best man filed out. Oh. Did you just say no? Nope. She just said no. Nope. I say renege her contract. That's what we're talking. You know I don't think that. But don't, don't uh, come for me because I ain't sent for nobody. Yeah, you said you know to me because you told me you wanted to be put God. in. I okay, we are. How do you change your mind? Hey, wait, 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 wait. It's a woman's prerogative to change your mind. You know that. Come on now. And I do it all the time. But oh, people Jesus. exit me, um, you know, don't know about, a woman don't want a man with a jelly bag. We want a man that's going to be strong. Well, I, I, okay. I don't have time for that. I have time for no whining man. Okay. So... You know, how you don't have time for wine and dance. Okay. You said you don't have time for wine and dance. That ain't what I said. Okay. (laughs) Wine and man. I said for wine. Do you do? Does anybody know what what the um the acronym man stands for? Does anybody know what man stands for? Here we go. Go ahead. Talk to us. What does man stand for? Me. Huh? Meet all needs. Meet, meet all needs. Meet all needs. Is that what man stands for? And a boy means burden on me or burden on you. Oh, but man is meet all needs. Is oh so okay. Oh, what is it? Say it again. Meet all needs. Well, okay. I guess I guess then if man means meet all needs, then I guess woman stands for worthy of man uh, meeting all needs. Okay. Holla. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen. Uh, Pastor Alicia, you still there? You said that your niece uh, w- was listening and had something she wanted to say? Well, she actually said what she looks for is honesty. Um, she didn't want to make the comment. I just told you what she said. She said what she looks for is honesty because nowadays, I'm just going to be honest, women are entrepreneurs. We can buy and get Amen. what we want. So financial Amen. support is something that we're looking for. I can get it myself. I'm a manager at okay. a bank. I own my own business. So I don't need you for your financial support. I need you for other things. And so it's okay. those things that I can't do for myself that I need my husband for. Okay. So then, so then, let's. So with that now, with that that you just said, you're you are a manager of a bank. You have your own business, so you don't need him so much for the support, but you need him for other things. Okay. So now your time has been consumed between your being a manager at a bank. And you having your business. That's where all of your time is. And no, yet, I, yet, wait a minute, I, wait a minute. And then when he needs you, you're not available because you're always occupied with your bank and your business. So no, now, so um, now, wait a minute. So now, so now he becomes standoffish. Now he's starting to withdraw himself. Now he's withdrawing himself. Not, uh, and so real, now, so wait a minute, wait a minute, let me finish. So now it's been six months. He hasn't oh touched Lord. you. He oh hasn't Lord. touched you whatsoever. 
oh, and now all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, he don't love me no more. I want a divorce. Why is that the reason to get a divorce when you're the one who manages a bank that keeps you busy and you have your own business that keeps you busy? Where's uh -oh. the time for uh -oh. him? See, we don't look at suffocation of time because statistics say that the average married couple needs 15 hours a week, which is a little bit under two hours a day. Well, if I may interject. Okay. I don't know how to prioritize and make time for my spouse. First of all, all right. I do understand that touch therapy is very important. It helps yes. keep away depression. It helps um, even lower blood pressure. So touch therapy has a lot of things that it that it does for an individual and for a relationship. For example, I'm on this call right now, but yet I'm also working my business because I'm single. Now, when I was married, I did balance my work, my school, and my business. When I was off on Thursdays, that time was dedicated to him. However, again, that person has to be willing to partake in it. And, again, just like you guys say women have PMS, you guys do too. You have your <laughs> moments where we're like, hey, what's going on with you? So for well, me, I I'll do know her. when enough is enough. <laughs> Preset. Uh, I won't so call it I, PMS. I don't yes, you go guys ahead, do. Finish. No, I'll tell you, you about it, but go ahead. You PMS. I will challenge that, but I want, I want to hear you. You know, At the, the only thing we got day, PMS is the poor motoring skills. That's it. Some men are intimidated <laughs> by women like me. I don't need your mm -hmm. finances, and I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. I don't need you for that. I can buy my own house. I can buy my own car. I don't need you for that. What I need you for is moral support. What I need you for is someone that can help me when I'm off balance. I need you to love me for me, to be there for me emotionally and spiritually, someone to help guide me into worship, someone, even though I may make more than him, can actually lead me into worship, lead the family into worship, someone that's not intimidated by my success. Can I just say this? Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Before you Please. do, let me say this. Let me say this. Because you just have actually described a marriage that I'm in right here and right now. And I cannot disagree with you, not one iota. Of course, I challenge the PMS part because I don't think it's a PMS thing. Men have a moment when their back is against the wall. They don't know what to do. And so the only thing they know how to do is to scratch and fight and try to crawl their way out of the situation. I'm not saying it's well, right. Why can you communicate but that? Why not huh? communicate that? Why not communicate well, see, that? That's, if this you're is having where I'm a driving at. Crisis, well, don't call it a midnight crisis because it you makes like you back 20. So I'll say something. 25, you're too young for midlife crisis. 45, you might qualify. And I'm not putting an age on it. I'm just saying when life comes at you at the speed of light and everything's happening at the same time and it feels like the world is caving in on you, men don't communicate as quickly as you women do. But what we try to do, and I can only speak for me, so I won't speak for every man on this, uh, on this phone, but what I do try to do, because like you, my wife and I, when I say, I won't say we have a perfect relationship, but I'm going to say we have a perfect relationship because my weaknesses are her strengths and her, her weaknesses are my strengths, and it balances both of us in every aspect. Aspect. Now, we've been against the wall on a couple of occasions. You wouldn't think so for the way people say we live, but our backs have been against the wall already. And here we are. We did not try to fight each other. We fought against whatever it was. It was uh, we used to say, it's Jesus, you, and me. That's the team. And that's what we've always stuck to. And that is the team for the Richard household. Jesus, okay. me, and her. That's it. And, and that's how it should be. But when... The rubber meets the road. I'm going to be very honest. Um, some men cannot handle that. I'm going to use my my relationship, my failed marriage as an example. One of the things that bothered him is that I made more than him, that I had the own, my own business. I have a blog talk show. I have a women's ministry. That bothered him that I was more successful than him. It bothered mm -hmm. him. It bothered him. And it's too busy for me. You're way too busy for he me. He had a problem with that. And I, and I take nothing from him 
as a man, but what I'm saying is the times where he should have communicated that to me, where he was, I could have helped with that. But because he did not speak those things, I did not know where he was until the relationship was on hospice I'm and there was no way to um, resurrect can I, can, can I intervene can I for a moment? Well, can I interject? Hold question. on, Bishop Elect. Just B- one small Bishop thing Elect. I want to let Hold her on. know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I want to I ask this question because I keep hearing this come up. I keep hearing this come up about how important it is to communicate things, how important it is to communicate things. So my question then is this. At what point do you recognize uh, what's going on with your your spouse? When does uh, when does discernment kick in, and and you're able to then recognize the spirit that is operating, and then able to deal with it based upon the wisdom of God? See, because I keep hearing this communication, communication, communication. But let's be truthful: men are not communicators. Let's be truthful. Not good, not good ones, anyway. Most men look, look, because because if we really go back, if we go back and study psychology, psychology tells us that behavioral patterns are learned between the age of six and it is set in stone by the age of ten. And so, right. what do what 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 do children do at the age of six to ten? Most of them play with some kind of toys. So, what kind of toys do boys play with? They play with toy trucks, the Tonka trucks, or they play with the matchbox or the Hot Wheel cars. What do girls right. play with? They play with no. dolls and kitchens. Okay, right. so what does that have to do with relationship? Well, in a man, to a man or to a little boy, right, what he does is when he's frustrated, he takes it out either with his toy gun or his toy car. So either he's trying to hurt something or he's trying to get away. Come on, let's think about it. Let's think about it. And what do what do women do with them to, with them toys with the toy doll or the kitchen? One one or two things. Either they are either they are uh, frustrated and they talk the doll's ear off, or they find a pan that's in the kitchen and they throw it. Come, yeah, Lord, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, and and so why? Because women are more effective in their communication because what they discern things differently. So my question is, when does discernment kick in so that you can recognize something else is going on and then when begin I'm to asking, deal with it? When I'm asking, how is your day? When I'm asking you, is everything okay? You seem a little off today. You seem like you're bothered by something. What's going on? Talk to me. That's when discernment is kicking in. At that point, as an adult, and this is just the way I think, I think you have a due diligence to your partner, to your mate, to learn how to effectively communicate what it is that's going on with you. And the both of you guys have to learn how to communicate without the environment being hostile so that the other person can feel safe wow. and express what it is if that is bothering him. But if you create an environment, every time I say to you, I'm just going to use you, Apostle Whitlow, because you're my friend. If I say, well, Apostle, this is what's bothering me, and then you say to me, Alicia, something's always bothering you. You always feel that way. You know what you just did? You invalidated what I felt. You made the environment that I came to you in to tell you what I was dealing with. You now made it an uncomfortable environment. So now I have just put up a wall. Now I feel as though I cannot trust you and talk to you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Okay. That is, that is wow. I'm saying, I'm saying, wow. Well, well, Tyrone is able to sneak into the home. Mm-hmm. Because he will listen. Exactly. Because he listens. And that is true. Because he and listens. That's how the enemy sneaks in. Because we as, we as believers, we have the church thing down. But what we don't have down is our home. We don't know how mm. to effectively manage our home. We don't because we we don't know when we need to take a break to say, okay, you know what? I need to steal away and spend some quiet time with my spouse. I've been at church three weeks in a row in a revival. I've been traveling on the road 
X amount of time. Let me take some time off to spend some time with my wife or my husband to show them that I appreciate, I love them for the support that they're giving me while I'm on the road. Let me show her that I appreciate her coming home and cooking dinner when she's at work 10 to 12 hours a day, the laundry, or he, or because he's at home, he's cooking, he's doing the laundry, he's making sure that the kids are okay. Let me step back and say thank you because what happens is we get used to that person there and we take one another for granted. And what happens is slowly but surely, brick by brick, that wall is going up and those insecurities are there. And then guess what? That's how the enemy comes in. And then by the time you realize that something is really wrong, the relationship is on hospice, and now we're headed to divorce court. This is why the church has the highest divorce rate. I don't understand how two people can be in God when God is love, but yet we can't make it work. Uh, can I just I, – I need to respond to that. Give me a second. Uh, I would simply say to you, my dear sister, and what you say has a lot of validation. Unfortunately, the insecurity level is mixed in the foundation way before you even get to that point, before it even gets to hospice. And take it from somebody that knows. I've been there. I've had a marriage that was exactly like that, extremely toxic, but it was well hidden until it got exposed. So all I'm saying, I'm not saying that what you're saying is wrong. What I am saying that a lot of that what causes people to – and actually I, I can't prove this because I haven't checked the latest facts. The last uh, divorce rate that I checked among believers was at 46%. It may be higher by now. I don't know. I haven't checked it. But I'm getting ready to do a family series anyway, so I'll be knowing this information. Good Lord, listen to my, in my English. I'll know this information in the next couple of months anyway. I'm respecting what you're saying because I agree with, I'd say, 70%, but it's the other 30% that I'm not even challenging it. I'm just listening and putting it in the back of my mind. I'm glad that you're talking because as a woman, I want to hear what you're thinking. I want to hear what's coming out of, what's coming from your heart. I want to hear what makes you tick. I mean, not that I have to know, because like I said, I have a great marriage right now, and if it's not a great marriage, then I'm the most delusional man you've ever met in your life, and I don't think I'm delusional, <laughs> because I mean, I really don't think I'm delusional, because like I said, my wife makes more money than I do. We're, she's very, she can walk away from me today, and she'll be more than all right, okay? As a matter of fact, she could start from scratch right now and still be in an excellent place, not a good place, an excellent place. Now, I, on the other hand, may have a minor struggle, but I'll be all right too. But that's not the point because neither one of us going anywhere because I told her as long as you have breath in your body, I'm going to make sure that every day that you have, you'll never have a dull day, not as long as I'm living. After I'm dead, whatever you do after that, who cares? I'm home. I'm going to heaven. I'll see you later. But thank you so much because I needed to hear that from you. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Okay. Let me, let me just say real quick. before I, 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 uh-huh. I'm, I, I'm a little concerned with one little part that uh, was brought up. And I can remember this because it said once you become married, you become one. You, you are united as one. Now, the area of making more money than the spouse, the, the, the female making more money than the male. Now, from where I sit, I thought I heard it then said that if they, they were making expressions. They were really make, making broad statements about the fact that you make more, make, make more money than he does. And if you bring that up in his face from time to time, that demasculates him. That is that that is a way of demasculating. Yeah, I think I've said that right. May Demas- I inter- Ema- emasculating? Let me, let me, let me May I interject? That, that's the I never de- brought that up. That was something that he brought up. Let me finish. He brought that up. Who, who's he? <laughs> My ex. I never. Okay, okay, all right, it I get it. it That's why I said he had right. an issue with it. Uh huh. Go ahead. See what okay. you don't start it with, love? <laughs> yeah, I'm going. sorry. <laughs> okay, that's why.
Come on, come on, finish what you were saying. I think primarily that that is what once I think you just took it took it away. But the um, when that is also brought up. So any amount of money that is in the house is our money. But once it is thrown in the face time to tap and say, I don't need you, I don't need you to do this, I don't need you to do that, that takes away that M-A-N, uh, make all, all needs, meet all needs, because you have just indicated that you don't need his help, because I got it like this. It's, still, it's our money, and this is going one account. I'll just say that you are one May person. I interject? But I really don't think that it should be brought up, thrown into his his face when you get angry. I may, however you might say it or however you may show it, but you often, I have reason to believe that you make a good point and let him know that you don't need and that Okay, so if I may interject. So I never brought that up. That was something that he brought up. I never made him feel inferior to me. In fact, all checking accounts were the same. We had six of them. Each account, his name was on. Every credit card, his name was on. Everything that we had, his name was on. So I never made him feel as though he was invalid. Anything that he wanted, he was able to purchase. I never questioned him about it. As long as there was money in the account to pay the bills, go buy what you want. I never had an issue with that. The issue that he had, which I never threw up in his face, is that he had the higher education, but yet I made more than him. That was his issue. Well, well, you know the golden rule. The golden rule is he who controls the gold makes the rules. Oh, no. <laughs> no, that's not hey. true. I allowed him to be, when I say my wait, wait, man, he taught me life, I allowed him to be the man of the house. But he could uh-huh. not handle that. Allowed. He allowed. could not handle allowed. that. Wow. <laughs> Allowed. Okay, so I was going to say something, but I'm going to shut up. I let him be the man of the house. He was the man Listen, of the house. Uh, hey, hey, Apostle, don't, on this okay. show, don't feel like you have to defend yourself because it's real, it's raw, it's relevant, it's uh, a discussion, and it's me, healthy for all who are I wanna, listening. I want to say sir. something, and I want you all to hear me. Mm-hmm. Because there are so many things that are going on so much that is being said that I really don't want anybody to miss this good stuff. And I don't want anyone to think that this is, if you will, a a heated discussion or a debate. I just think that when we're passionate about what we talk about, it excites us as a people. Yep. Yep. So enough to say that, again, the Pharisees is asking Jesus this question is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause. At the end of the day, we're looking at different things that are triggering people to get divorced. And that's what we're trying to break apart. That thing that people want to do so that they have a reason to divorce. We want to break that up. We want to stop that. At the end of the day, that's what we want to do. Can, I, I All right. Thank, thank you. you. So, 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 so uh, when we look at what, some of the things that are causing people to get divorced, we're mm-hmm. finding out that the biggest thing is a lack of commitment. Yep. That is the most common reason exactly. that people get divorced. Uh huh. Lack of commitment. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is like 75% of the reason people get divorced. Uh-huh. 56% of people get divorced because they argue too much. 55 people get divorced because of infidelity. Uh-huh. 46% of people get divorced because they married too young. Mm-hmm. That's what they 45% say. 45% of people uh, get divorced because of unrealistic expectations. Then 44% of people have a lack of equality in the relationship. 
Forty-one percent of the people uh, lack have they, there was a lack of preparation for marriage. Then twenty-five percent of people get divorced because of domestic violence or abuse. And if you add yes, this up, this becomes more up. than a hundred percent of the reason why people get divorced. Well, you left ten percent out. Uh, and, and, and so, what we're trying to find a way to do is to put a system, or if you will, put a a strategy in place to combat all of these things. Because if we can't combat it, how are we helping people to become better? Well, Amen. Said you left uh, that. Let you me see. Out, I, I want to see sir. Apostle Patrice. Are you here? Yeah, I'm here. How are you? Amen. Amen. I'm here. How are you? Good evening, everybody. Um, I've been on the phone listening, and hello. Yes. Can you all hear me? Yes. I said, can you guys hear me? Yes. I hear you. Yes, I can. Okay. Well, good evening to everyone uh, on the line. Amen. I've been on the line Hello. listening for, hi, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. I said, I've been on the line listening for quite some time, and <clears throat> I'm hearing um, a lot of different comments and different things, different opinions, and you know, um, ways of looking at divorce. And I'm saying some things and I'm hearing some things and some things are disturbing um, my spirit, to be completely honest with you. Um, and part of that has to do with the ideologies that we have in terms of um, relationship and communication. And If we treat our spouses, what I'm seeing a lot of, we're passionate about it, but I'm hearing people talk over each other, and that's what we do in relationships sometimes. I'm hearing um, women this or men that, and we have to treat people the same way that God would, an individual case-by-case basis. I found it very offensive to hear um, about women with PMS and things like that because People have mood swings in general, be it a man or a woman. And regardless as to what the cause is, people have mood swings. It's an emotion. It's human. And it's degrading to speak to a woman and bring that up. Well, you're PMSing. Well, as if it's her fault. Um, So those things are things that are extremely offensive um, as a woman to be brought up. I did hear the young lady on the line where she spoke of her husband and that one time that I hear her say, and I listened very diligently and attentively, say that she told her husband she made more money than him. I never heard her say that. Um, There are some people, there are women who feel that they cannot tolerate a man who uh, is more successful than she is because she may be competitive in nature. But there are also some men who cannot tolerate a woman being more successful, whether she brings it up or she doesn't. To him, it's offensive. And the missing component in my eyes from where I sit and from what I've seen in ministry over the 30-something years that I've been in ministry is that the missing component is we forget God. God has to be the head, period. I get it. The man is the head of the household. And women, submit yourselves to your husbands. I, I, get, I got it. But at the end of the day, we have got to return to the precursor relationship. We've got to get to a place where as a couple, we seek the Lord together and we seek the Lord individually. So there's your corporate relationship, but then there's your individual relationship. And when we get to a place where we think we have all the answers because I make more money and I'm a woman or I have all the answers just because I'm a man and I have an XY chromosome, Mm -hmm. that's problematic. And that's when you run into Ichabod and the glory of the relationship starts to depart. 
And that's problematic. I think it's damnable that in the body of Christ, we cannot even reason together. I think it's uh, a shame that we are even training younger people to respond the same way. People's tolerance levels are not what they used to be. And so can we solve this conflict? Can we solve this problem uh, as a whole? We have to treat it individually, one by one, name by name. There's no cookie-cutter approach to marriage. There's a lot of gray areas. We all know that. Um, And I get it. There's some good points. But some of the things that I heard, I I must be honest with you, I was a little disturbed by And I know that we're having fun and, you know, whatnot. But I'm I'm just a little bit disturbed um, by some of that because of this is how we counsel people. Then I think we're adding fuel to the fire instead of bringing resolve resolve to it. So you may agree, you may not. It doesn't matter either way. That's just my opinion. That's what I wanted to share. And I thank you for allowing me this opportunity to share that time. God bless you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, woman of God. I appreciate you so much. Amen. Uh, there, there, there are some very good things that we need to take from this conversation. Uh, and if we are not careful, we will allow people to get divorced for every cause. What we're trying to do is bring that rate down, but it doesn't come down unless we help people to make their marriage meaningful. And that's what I believe on tonight. Let's get some final comments tonight before we get out of here. Amen. No matter which direction we go, let's get some final comments tonight. Amen. Amen. Excuse me. I got a quick question. Uh, Brother Brandon right here. So as far as marriage is concerned, what what um like what seals the deal as far as marriage? And talking about coming from Jesus Christ's perspective, is it when you have sex or when you put the ring on a finger? When does the marriage start? When you commit. What, when you say I want to marry you? When you make the commitment and decision that that is the one and it's a spiritual commitment. It is not necessarily a natural commitment. It is a spiritual right. commitment. You see that woman. You have to see wife material in that woman. And let me say this to any young lady listening, and there are some that are listening right now that have gone down this road. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. If in a situation you're looking for Mr. Right. And settling for Mr. Right now, you've put yourself in a vulnerable position because as long as you're the other woman, you'll never be the only woman. But if you're that woman that's willing to wait for your king to make his presence known and at the same time are doing what you need to do, rest assured there is a high level of a chance that you're going to enjoy what I call marital bliss. It still exists. I promise you it still exists. All right, I'm gonna leave that right there because somebody else may have something to add to it. Wait, 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 wait! I, I, I don't think you. I don't think you answered my question. I'm sorry. Y'all. No, I, 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 I think wanna... commit, commitment. It, it's at the level of commitment, spiritually speaking. Now, if you're talking Christian, if you're talking non-Christian, you have to know that in your heart <laughs> of hearts that this is the one. She's got to fit you like a well-tailored suit. In other words, you know, and, and I don't want to get into all the little cliches because I want to leave the cliches to the side. All I want to simply say is you got to know in your heart of hearts that this is, and this goes for saved and unsaved. you got to know in your heart of hearts, and you'll know it. it trust me, you will know it. If I hmm. interject something here, I'm sorry. You said your name is Brandon? Yes, ma'am. Sir? Okay. Um, I just want to say this. In the Bible, it talks about betrothed, where Mary and Joseph were betrothed. That's engaged. There was a commitment there. At the time that you make a commitment, when you're a born-again believer, we date to mate. So you're dating a person to find that mate. And the scripture has said, he that find a wife, find a good thing. So to me, you have to be able to look. So once you've looked, you've explored, you've dated different people, and you know what you want. When you find that individual that you believe you're ready to make that commitment to, your word is your bond. And so once you become betrothed or engaged or you make it known to her that your relationship is exclusive 
at that point, you should start to treat that marriage that way because God is a God of covenant. So marriage doesn't have to do with the law and a piece of paper, that relationship. In fact, the Bible speaks of a writing of divorcement, but never once does it indicate nor imply a writing of marriage because most marriages were um, prearranged. So when you make that commitment to that individual and you feel like you found that one, that's what you should um, start to conduct yourself in that manner. The Bible talks about God caused the deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept. And then the Bible says that God closed up the flesh. Never one time did it indicate or imply that God opened the flesh, but he certainly did close it. And then it goes on to say that then God presented or brought the woman to the man and Adam said, it never said who woke Adam up. It made it clear that God put him to sleep, but it never said who woke him up. So when the right one came on the scene, he woke up and said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. point to you is that when you meet the right one, the vision of God will come alive in you. Everything in you will come alive, and you will know that that's the one. And at that point, why would you not treat the gift of God as it is, as a gift of God? So at that point, when you make a covenant, a verbal commitment, and you're a born-again believer, and you say, God, this is who I'm going to marry, you got to understand that that covenant has been made between you, that individual, and God. And so at that point, to me, my opinion to you, with biblical understanding, is that that is the time that you begin to conduct yourself in that manner. Other than that, do don't make a commitment. I agree with that, but I thought that's what I said, making it simple. But, yes, what she just said, leave it at that. I knew you were going to say that. No, you did. You did, though. You did. But I was like, wait a minute. Maybe he, not, maybe he can't really fully explain how. No, no. She covered. She covered. Listen, she covered. Without adding anything, taking anything away from what she just said, I didn't put it to you in specifics the way she did, but that's exactly what it means. You'll know. I promise you. Amen. You will That's for sure. Know. That's for sure. That's for sure. Well, listen, we are not out of talk. We're simply out of time for tonight. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us tonight. Special thanks to my good friend, Apostle um, uh, Apostle Catrice Bolden. Uh, she's she's a good friend of mine, and she she's been uh, we've been around each other for about I guess ten years or something like that. And she's been a blessing ever since I've known her. And if she gives you a word, you can certainly look forward to it. Amen. Um, thank God for you, Apostle Felicia Flythe, for your input always. Um, Bishop Elect Richard, you know you gonna you gonna sound the alarm. Appreciate you certainly. Thank God for you, uh, Reverend Billy Gabriel, Doctor Kimmy Robinson. Thank you, Brother Chuck and Brother Brandon for being with us this evening. I pray it's not your last time. Thank you, Pastor uh, Alicia Carter, for joining us tonight and sharing with us uh, so personally. We thank God for you. We thank God for each and every one of you. Let me say this again. This whole conversation is designed to help people to think. So though sometimes it may seem like it may be debating, I really believe it is just the passion that comes from the discussion. That's what I believe, so hear me. So let me say this. Your marriage will not be meaningful as long as your mate is meaningless. Join us next week, Saturday, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central, for more Making Marriage Meaningful. Until then, we say have a blessed week. We say go with God, and he will, and he will go with you. Peace. Shalom. Dr. Kimmy, drop that track.